good evening everybody today i'm very happy to introduce professor victor raskin uh, he's a distinguished professor professor of linguistics at purdue university he's an associate director and founding faculty member of sirius at purdue university along with eugene spafford and mike atalla he has courtesy appointments at uh, uh, the computer science department and computer and information technology Today he will be talking about his new research, uh, and I'm really excited to hear him. Can you hear me? I have a Oxbridge accent. It's very hard to understand. Um, I uh, uh, am a replacement uh, speaker. We had a gap and. Uh, on Monday, I responded to a solicitation to talk uh, about something. Uh, it's my nth appearance uh, in the seminar, and it's not unusual for uh, local people to step in when there is um, a gap. What you normally do is uh, take your current technical paper and give it a dry, uh, dry run or something. And that's not what um, I'm planning to do. Instead, I decided to tell you, all of whom, with maybe one exception, have never heard about natural language work in information uh, security, about that work. And so uh, I put together um, a um, uh, PowerPoint. I will probably mostly ignore it. I usually uh, uh, do. I'll throw something on the board for you to see something. Uh, and um, mm, mm, at the end, in the last 10 or 15 min minutes, I want to show you a working resource uh, established here at Purdue with uh, our ontological uh, uh, semantic technology. Everything uh, I have done, and I have been doing pretty much this work without information uh, security since 1961, when I was a mature 17-year-old know-all. Now I know less, but uh, at that time I knew um, uh, everything. Uh, information security provided an interesting opportunity to port my work in applications of uh, semantics, natural language semantics, into information security. Mostly, and most importantly for both of us, it gave an opportunity to two old friends, Professor Mike Atala and myself, who had met in 82 on his first day uh, on the job here, to work together. We always wanted to, and he was doing um, combinatorical uh, computational combinatorics. And I was doing what I'm doing. And uh, I'm a trained uh, mathematician. I understood what he was doing, was very interested. He is just brilliant, so he understood what I was doing without any training in um, uh, linguistics. We were dying to do something together. And we couldn't figure out what it could be other than drinking beer. And uh, then uh, Spaff came up with his brilliant idea of a multidisciplinary approach to information security. We were the absolutely first in the world uh, to do it. And uh, Mike and I uh, found a place, an opportunity, and of course the time to do uh, work together, which immediately resulted in a couple of uh, patents and a couple of papers with uh, students, uh, and the papers are still um, cited as the benchmark of work on natural language uh, watermarking and um, temper proofing. So with some trepidations, let, let's go down uh, the thing. What is natural language information assurance and security? I coined this. Uh, um, acronym and IS comes, of course, from serious information assurance and um, uh, security. So here is uh, uh, my interpretation of it. And basically, it was uh, porting 
natural language processing, what it really is and what it was before uh, uh, machine learning, which is now dead, um, uh, has uh, hijacked uh, the term. Nowadays, when you hear natural language processing, it's people still doing machine learning, a field that nobody understands and uh, yields no uh, results. This is the alternative to it. It is based on meaning, on natural language meaning, on human knowledge of the world, which informs our communication, and which just about everybody thinks cannot be done, except that we did it. And so the verdict of the scientific community is, oh, Raskin is great, and what he is doing is 30 uh, years down the road. I will die in 10. I'm um, uh, scheduled to die early in June 2026, according to Lloyd's um, of London actuarial table. So I take no appointments, make no appointments after the 15th of that uh, month. Uh, by my own chronology, 30 years from now happened in the 1990s when we implemented the technology, applied it uh, to many academic style um, applications, even made um, uh, some money on it. Uh, well, NLP, um, uh, the way we do it is, of course, completely uh, computational, and it's based on a major uh, principle. We develop an ontology. Everybody now develops an ontology. We did it in the 1990s, and suddenly the government and the industry were producing ontologies, which were not ontologies. They were taxonomies of human terms to unify uh, the usage for human um, uh, uh, use our ontology is uh, nodes for events and um, uh, objects with a lot of properties combining them. So every single fact in natural language or outside has an ontological image, which is computational. And you will see what it looks like uh, when we get to the uh, resource, which doesn't have a good name, um, but it's engineering. Dot, uh, uh, Purdue.edu tilde OST. Uh, everybody is entitled to a guest um, uh, login. Uh, we realized uh, we are talking 99 when uh, you know, the series was just beginning. And uh, Mike and I started working in 2000, worked very actively for 2002 with two slightly uh, varying teams of uh, graduate and undergraduate um, uh, students and published two papers in the information hiding um, uh, series of uh, conferences. I thought that information hiding was an extremely funny term. Information is telling somebody something, hiding it. Uh, but I'm used uh, 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 to it now. Um, we uh, actually um, uh, addressed a number of current and possible applications. What natural, um, uh, what information assurance and security was involved in, in the non-linguistic uh, way. We thought that we could do it linguistically because we realized, and it is probably even truer now than it was then, that most of the files on all the computer systems are in natural languages. At that time we could say uh, pretty reliably that the internet was in English. You realize that it isn't anymore. Sixty percent of websites are not in English. Uh, lots in Chinese, many uh, in um, uh, Russian. Uh, the current applications then, this uh, um, uh, is uh, a slide from a 2004 presentation on the global picture of natural language uh, information assurance and security, which I prepared 
for the World Congress of Linguists to tell them what they could be doing if they wanted to do something useful. And then I didn't go. So uh, the linguists still don't know. Um, and what I'm marking in tempo proofing is what uh, we did with uh, Mike. Uh, the Atala Raskin and others publication, 2001 and 2002, you can find them immediately on Google or my research profile, uh, on Academia, EDU, or ResearchGate, or whatever, or, or just on Google. Everybody quotes uh, them. Is based on a previous discovery by Wagstaff and Mike Atala on the traversal uh, formula and on the semantic representation of uh, the content of text, which looks different from the text. And somebody, so nobody who is looking to destroy our watermark is not even seeing where it is uh, hidden. Now, watermarking at that time was done on imaging pictures, uh, a picture of Victor Raskin, very ugly to look at. And somewhere outside of the eye area, marginally, there is a text of any length saying who it belongs to, to whom to pay if you want to re reprint it. And it doesn't change anything. That is, the human eye cannot uh, fix it. In language, we uh, did something entirely different. There is no marginal. Uh, area, but we represented um, uh, several sentences, uh, typically 64 uh, sentences, uh, in such a way that the traversal produces two bytes that we need uh, to create the hash into which uh, the uh, text uh, projects. Uh, it was a piece on, of beauty. Uh, Um, I give you a brief uh, list of applications uh, which we implemented or were thinking of implement, uh, implementing. Uh, the, uh, mm, uh, I don't remember already why something is uh, 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 read. Uh, we created um, uh, an uh, application that could help you memorize an impossible password. At that time, some people still believed in passwords, and uh, uh, users were using I love Mike or something um, uh, like that, which is legitimate, I love Mike Atala, but uh, it's sort of easier to uh, uh, guess, and when you get a randomly generated password, it was impossible to uh, memorize it. And so um, a PhD student of mine, one of the first PhD students here at um, uh, Sirius implemented it. Sanitizer was very important. Sanit uh, uh, text information databases are sanitized or downgraded in order not to share all you have, the truth. It's a NATO problem. We share uh, um, uh, intelligence uh, data with NATO countries, which we don't trust, and they don't trust us. So we try to suppress some of the information, trying to make it seamless, because the uh, sanitizing used in the letters from the front in World War II, when it was uh, Dear Mary and everything was uh, blackened out, and uh, says, Love Bob. The, those letters were not uh, really very uh, contentful. So sanitizing is something that we also did. There was a couple of dissertations um, on that. Ontology-based uh, terminology standardizer, we formulated it and realized that we didn't need it. We don't need uh, stand to standardize uh, terminology if we translate from whatever terms you use to its um, uh, uh, content. Semantic mimicking uh, has been long dead. Do you know that uh, uh, it was uh, people developed uh, programs that uh, uh, took uh, a message, hid it, um, well, in the text. The text was generated automatically 
to look like it has meaning. In order to fool a computer, you wouldn't fool a human user. They would look at it, they would see that it is nonsense. But it uh, consisted of text, and since uh, much of that was done by the computer, it was to uh, fool it. A very good dissertation was almost uh, uh, written by a very talented PhD student who uh, stopped working on it when her husband failed his defense, and she didn't want uh, to get ahead of him and never came back uh, um, uh, uh, to that. We never did much about perimeter protection and attack det uh, d detection, and uh, you who are new to the uh, field probably have never heard of them. And uh, I think nobody um, uh, uh, does that. Steganalysis uh, is an interesting area. Mike uh, uh, provided a mathematical proof that steganalysis, that uh, discovering um, a secret message, cannot be resolved mathematically. It can only be done uh, heuristically in images. It is done on the basis of uh, Bayesian uh, things. Uh, I'm deeply uh, suspicious of everything that uses Bayesian because sometimes it's a cover for uh, not doing uh, much. Watermarking and tamper proofing, we did. Purdue patented uh, that and then abandoned them thinking that they would not make uh, much money uh, on that. Traitor tracing I'll talk about uh, separately for a couple um, uh, of minutes. Uh, streaming data uh, processing was an interesting idea of trying to figure out that an attack is taking place in process. That is to analyze something before the complete text or the, the complete string is there. We made some progress, we didn't develop it much. Semantic forensics is something that I published uh, uh, articles uh, on. Using the computer to detect deception. Wow. Not machine learning um, uh, way uh, at all, but uh, uh, rather by analyzing the text semantically, projecting it into the ontology, and finding gaps, finding um, uh, places. I'll talk about it in a second. Now there is an interjection of what ontological semantics uh, is, and you have the beginning, the top level of the ontology, and it goes 60 to 80 levels down. We basically take the world and classify it into um, uh, uh, nodes here. You, I don't know whether you can see events are mental, physical, and social. There are also meta events to confu confuse the enemy. Um, and uh, they are objects and their are uh, attributes. And uh, it has now been developed by my co-author of the last nine years, whom I couldn't talk into coming here. She may actually walk in um, uh, at the end, Professor Julia Taylor of Computer and Information um, uh, um, uh, uh, Technology, developed into a graphic interface. The uh, graphs are incredibly inconvenient. They don't, uh, uh, they are not placed well on the page because they go like forever and very, very um, uh, uh, small uh, 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 vertically. But uh, you can basically think of anything in the world, any object, any situation, any um, uh, uh, fact as presented in terms of our ontology. The ontology is, of course, a uh, work in progress, but we have developed a couple of versions uh, with about 10,000 nodes, and 10,000 is about good. Um, uh, and about 50,000 words in all of their meanings are interpreted in terms of those ontological uh, concepts. The um, enormous advantage uh, of uh, ontological semantics is, uh, and that's what makes it different from various commercial ontologies is that it is not flat, that it has several hundred uh, properties, and uh, 
I only realized about a year ago that what I'm representing is not meaning in natural language, but how the uh, world is, my knowledge of the world, because uh, one of the difficulties of computational me meaning is that we humans say very little. Not me, I say a lot, I talk nonstop. But um, uh, I started uh, speaking very early in life, uh, at 10 months in uh, Russian, and uh, I have never stopped. Uh, uh, so I'll stop in about 10 years. Um, mm, I think I can jump ahead um, uh, uh, here. Who determines these labels? Like, uh, is there a person who comes up with these nodes or labels that are put on the nodes? Uh, we have um, computerized uh, uh, or semi-computerized uh, the process of um, acquisition. We paid a lot of attention to it because we are linguistically uh, literate. Have you heard of Psych? It, it's a project that was is, is dead now, but it was supported generously by the silent uh, Microsoft billionaire, uh, Paul Allen, uh, long uh, separated from uh, uh, Microsoft, but uh, uh, having a lot of money. And he invested about $18 million in uh, the project uh, suggested by um, a fellow uh, math prodigy, a New York uh, uh, Jewish wunderkind um, called Doug Leonard, who came up with the idea uh, that we must make an inventory and the structure of common sense. The information that you and I and everybody else uh, uh, shares that uh, in order to uh, eat uh, a uh, filbert knot, you have to crack it because it has an inedible uh, shell. And tons and tons of uh, other things, which unfortunately includes our knowledge of Donald Trump. Uh, well, we will forget soon, but uh, um, uh, 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 never, uh, nevertheless. So we say something, and the sentence has a few words. The computer can at best understand the words. We understand so much more, everything that immediately follows from that, that the um, infamous recall experiments of the 1960s showed that we don't remember what was said verbatim. We get this area of information, but what actually activated it, what triggered it, we don't remember. People in experiments testify a week later, like in court or no, what one of the participants in the Fender Bender from uh, uh, a short film they uh, saw actually uh, said. And uh, 20 people would swear or no that that's what they said, and they're all different. Turns out the lawyers have always known that what makes the lawyers so cynical is that they know that we are all stupid. We are not stupid, we uh, just pay attention to the piece of knowledge that language reveals, and, it, and everything can be paraphrased in up to a million ways in every language. And we don't want to bother about what was actually um, said as long, everybody got the content absolutely right in that testimony, but the words were all different. That uh, ontological semantics is all of that, but we, Julia has much, much better uh, pictures um, uh, for it. In the middle there is the ontology and the lexicons and inference rules and their analyzers. All of that is implemented now in ways that never makes Julia happy, and so she doesn't release it to the public. I steal it from her. Uh, these objects are language independent. These Ontology is language independent. Is the same 
for all languages. Okay. And the words of the, uh, of the specific language, they are all collected in the lexicon. That's language specific, okay. and they are all anchored in the concepts in various um, uh, uh, ways, depending on the meaning in those languages. We have uh, implemented at various times five or six different lexicons. The funny thing that in the history of ontological semantics that I developed with Sergei Nirenburg, my former PhD student at New Mexico State uh, University, our first lexicon was Spanish because somebody paid for it. It was, it was a grant uh, to develop uh, medical information for World Health Organization for South America, and it was in Spanish. Then I made a major discovery that translating the lexicon from language to language it a, is a six-person uh, month effort, costing less than $20,000, uh, in spite of the fact that words do not correspond to each other. Semantic forensics, uh, a word about that. It was a minor sensation when it was published in 2004. 2004, believe it or not, we had an election. Also, believe it or not, Trump didn't run. <laughs> At one point, uh, uh, early uh, in 2004, there were nine pretty serious Democratic uh, contenders. None of them won, because uh, that was the year when George Bush uh, won his second uh, term. So they were, uh, there was only one Republican uh, candidate, and nine uh, of those. Uh, Kat Trisenberg, my associate at the time, at Sirius as well, participant in the uh, research groups with Mike Atala, called them nine monkeys. Um, and uh, uh, came up, uh, she was a very cynical person of mixed uh, origin, including um, uh, Jewish blood. And she said, the first principle, Jews out. And the Jews were the first uh, that disappeared. More people turned out to be Jewish than um, wanted to. One of the people who was not Jewish, who is still around, he was uh, chair of the Democratic um, uh, Party a few years ago, was Howard Dean. Um, does anybody remember him? Um, he was a uh, two-term uh, governor of Vermont, and he was a physician uh, by uh, training. The New York Times decided to run investigative reports in uh, their Sunday supplements. And those were very, very long texts, very expensive by the best uh, reporters, uh, running probably about 30 pages of uh, uh, book size. So I was reading the one on Howard Dean. And I noticed one uh, interesting thing. Uh, they talked about uh, him, about his privilege, typically Republican um, uh, childhood on Park Avenue in New York. Only rich people used to live on Park um, uh, uh, Avenue. Uh, his father and grandfather and great-grandfather were all presidents of a closed uh, country club, which didn't allow uh, blacks, Jews, dogs, and, uh, um, and other uh, uh, categories. A lot of bad information for a Democratic candidate. Also that his father, uh, when he died, left uh, $7 million uh, to share between Howard and his uh, brother. Uh, that was in the 1980s. $7 million was probably a noticeable amount of money mm, at the time. Now, of course, it's pocket change. Um, uh, and there was one thing which struck me, and I grew up in the Soviet Union, so the way I read newspapers, Americans don't read newspapers. First, I decide it's all a lie. Now I want to know why they are lying and where they are lying. I'm trained to discern uh, lying. I do it in uh, 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 life as well. I noticed that uh, the father's profession was never mentioned. Howard's wife, Judy, also a physician, was uh, mentioned. His brother, who uh, 
disappeared somewhere in Nepal um, uh, around that time. His profession was mentioned. Every single adult who was mentioned had a profession indicated. Adults do. We do something um, uh, in life. Not the father. Well, so uh, I did some research. I discovered that the father was uh, um, a Wall Street broker who actually had always stayed on this side of the bars. But apparently it was really not good to mention that he was uh, uh, a broker. And I realized that I could do it automatically because interpreting the text, even partially, a person is mentioned, I fill out, uh, well, uh, this um, uh, uh, slide shows how I can uh, uh, discover contradictions. If the same text mentioned uh, uh, two uh, uh, humans, uh, probably called um, uh, John, but different humans, uh, and uh, they are in different places of Spain at the same time, that's something I should look at. A person cannot be in two places at the same time, except if uh, I teach a course at Purdue which meets uh, in five rooms and it's closed uh, uh, circuit. So the next one is about Howard Dean. It's very easy for me to translate the text into ontological information. And about every human, human one, two, and three, I will get the name, age, adult, if they are adult. There is occupation. And for one person, Papa Dean, um, uh, the father of Harold Dean, there is no occupation. That will at least flag the possibility of uh, uh, deception. We took it further, and that's the last substantive uh, uh, slide uh, we'll talk about. We uh, discovered in 2010, Julie and I, we've been working together since uh, 07, I, th I think, um, discovered something called defaults, things uh, that are only meant and never mentioned. I tell you, uh, John unlocked the door. I tell you, John unlocked the door with a key. Doesn't the second sentence strike you a little bit redundant? It isn't if actually all the doors are on electronic locks and when they break down, there is no outage, you use a barn key to open uh, the door. So it's a kind of an unusual marked situation. But if I just open the door with the regular um, key, latch key or something, I never mention it. I will tell you, um, uh, uh, I already ate. Will I tell you I already ate food if I'm not trying to be funny? Those, uh, uh, I can tell you I have had some Chinese food, bad food, uh, interesting uh, uh, food, somebody else's food, but not just food because we eat food. And so we omit uh, this information. And when we don't, it's an interesting situation. It's worth um, uh, uh, noting. And that brings up, yeah, uh, brings up uh, uh, the hardest problem of uh, information security. What is the hardest problem of information security? It's so hard that we don't even talk about it anymore. Inside the threat. Why? Because usually all computer um, software or whatever we have fails. If I'm a smart uh, uh, traitor, I don't go into somebody else's uh, um, uh, account. I stay in mine. I'm fully authorized. There is no intrusion uh, to detect. Mention a uh, ready-made software package, it's useless. I'm doing everything I'm supposed to do. 
don't watch my uh, keystrokes. They're very usual. I'm doing nothing unusual. At the same time, I steal my own um, uh, information and give it to the enemy uh, competitor or uh, 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 whatever. All the uh, software packages fail. So what do we do? We go back a hundred years and we look for the money. That is, people spend more money than the government or the uh, corporation that employs them, uh, pays them. In uh, one of the recent, uh, uh, much advertised, but of course not 100% uh, 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 described, uh, a spy who is now uh, in prison, Mr. Harris, I forget his uh, uh, first name, employed by NSA or CIA or whatever, took his money, made hundreds of thousands of dollars. I forget who he was working for, probably for Russian corporation. It was after the uh, Russian counter-revolution, uh, communism, and Soviet Union uh, were down. He took that money and donated it anonymously to his church. So he uh, drove a Hyundai. He didn't go and buy a Lamborghini, which of course would make it um, immediately. Uh, no. So we developed a technique based on uh, 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 these defaults about how if we tape with a warrant and stuff like that, what people blab about to friends uh, on the phone, uh, posting on Facebook, they will give away information without realizing they are doing that. It all started out with a posting by a friend, Julia, and I um, uh, mentored when she was uh, visiting here for the summer, who uh, posted uh, on Facebook, a white dude was uh, hitting on me all night in the club yesterday. And we realized that she was giving away some information about herself absolutely without being aware of it. We addressed audiences like that, and they all told me the same thing. She was not white. 97% of our informants in an uh, informal experiment said she was not uh, white. And Julia and I knew that she uh, wasn't. She is actually biracial, and we met her in 09, in 08, uh, she and her then uh, uh, boyfriend, also biracial, were campaigning for Barack Obama because he is also biracial. We were the first to, uh, um, uh, that's when we first figured out, being of course uh, white, that biracial is not the same as African-American, and so they had their own um, uh, league. The press forgot about it. and. Uh, kept referring to Obama as an African-American. Well, his mother was American, his father was African, but he is not an African-American. That is not an American um, uh, of uh, African um, uh, uh, descent. So we started looking at um, uh, how she was giving away that information. And then we realized that if we watch a uh, suspect in insider uh, trade. There may be situations that we created and uh, explored. We scared the stuff out of the uh, privilege new security paradigms workshop by invitation, uh, who uh, uh, looked at us and said, so you know all about us that we don't know we are telling you. And I said, yeah, of course. Well, back in the Soviet Union, it was a survival uh, technique. I had my own informer attached to me on the first day at the university. Didn't know I was so important. But we were surrounded at the university, Moscow State University, a privileged school. Every uh, fifth uh, of us was a KGB informer. And so you needed to analyze what people were uh, uh, telling you, not taking anything. Um, on uh, uh, faith. So somebody tells you 
uh, I had to um, uh, finish my presentation on my uh, transcontinental uh, flight uh, last night. Uh, thank God I had my charger. Oh, you had your charger and you could plug it in. Well, my friend, you were flying business class. Business class is expensive. When you travel um, on business, Purdue now pays my business class out of my own grant money if I have any because I'm old. But normally, um, they don't even pay the president uh, first class. So that's the money that you may be um, uh, conceding. So anyway, that's uh, uh, just uh, a little bit of taste for you, for what we can do. We are doing um, uh, anonymization, uh, preserving the um, uh, privacy. We are going into implicit meaning what we say without saying, and of course the uh, defaults and stuff like that. Julia and I have published over 50 papers together in the last um, eight uh, years, developing all of those things. Uh, for students in the program, I would like to bring to your attention uh, that the purely uh, technical problems of information security for which you uh, uh, write uh, master thesis uh, uh, at CIT is not the only uh, uh, possibility. I just uh, graduated uh, the last but one uh, PhD student who is working on uh, natural language processing. There are things to do. We uh, have created an enormously diverse uh, uh, program and network security is not the only subject worth uh, addressing. Uh, what I want to do in the uh, uh, five to seven minutes is, uh, um, can I get on the internet here? Yeah, okay, uh, on uh, this computer? Mm -hmm. The site is en en engineering.purdue.edu slash tilde. OST. OST stands for Ontological Semantic Technology. That's what we developed with um, Julia. Can I yeah. uh, get on the internet? Yeah, you just have to escape and. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. There you go. Well, that's Google. Oh, uh, you want to do Google? Okay. No, I don't want Google. Google oh. has absolutely nothing. Th this is Firefox. It's not Google. Yeah, nothing to tell me. Oh, okay. Uh, It's not yet 100% polished, so it doesn't delete what is not necessary. This is a uh, very small ontology that is implemented uh, here. It has only about 1,500 nodes. We uh, know how to extend it to uh, 10,000. Uh, do you know how many words you know, different words? What is your vocabulary in your native tongue? 50 million words? Uh, 10,000 is uh, four times uh, the minimum vocabulary of high school graduate. Uh, not in my experience, and uh, the freshman that I 
sometimes deal with now about 17 words and uh, uh, use them incredibly um, uh, well. William, uh, William F. Buckley uh, Jr., a right-wing intellectual, don't laugh, he was the only one, um, uh, knew about 50,000 words, had an incredible vocabulary. He was a TV personality, uh, uh, the creator and uh, uh, anchor of uh, Frontline, which still exists, but it's not the same. And when he got old and couldn't win the debate on fact, he won it on uh, using the words nobody knew. So he said, but don't you think that blah, 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 blah. And nobody had the courage to say, you know, I don't understand the single word that you said. People said, yeah, mostly, uh, largely. Um, uh, uh, I think if you know 30,000 words, you are already uh, pretty much incredible. Probably not 10, but 20, I think, is an educated person's uh, uh, minimum. We have uh, lexicons of 50,000, which won't work for us if, you, uh, if we try to apply it to a terminological area. We have developed this primarily for medical uh, use, for working with medical uh, you know, text health records and stuff like that. The Internet has uh, lists, and the lists of world diseases have 30 7,000 diseases. I uh, come from a long and proud lineage of hypochondriac. I think that, that I'm sick. I know like 100 diseases. You realize there are almost 37,000 diseases that I may all have, <laughs> and I uh, uh, know nothing about it. In terminology, you uh, have to acquire uh, a little more. It takes about six months for us to add, to adjust um, uh, the ontology. Here is how it works. It starts with the uh, useless uh, root uh, of uh, all. All is divided into events and objects. Event, mental event, meta-event, modality, Myth mythical event, non-realistic, uh, physical, and social, and states, which are not uh, actions. Social event, socialized, communicative uh, event, economic event, game, uh, and you go down until you uh, reach things which don't have the tiny arrow here, and those don't have children. We have parent nodes and we have children uh, nodes. If you develop an application that needs to uh, differentiate between card games, do you know how many card games are there? Probably around 700. Uh, I can play probably 20, and uh, so you may always add leaves, add um, uh, 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 children. You uh, click on any one of them, and it gives you, um, uh, all this, of course, meaningless, but uh, this is what card game uh, is, uh, and uh, it has a property instrument and you play it with um, uh, cards. It is also a child of game, and game will tell us more about what it is. Properties are inherited from children, and they go down. Uh, this is our simple answer to the argument, actually a kind of a jerk of movement, saying, oh, it cannot be done. Oh, really? Undergraduates with minimum training using this uh, uh, software acquire up to eight concepts an hour. We play them an extremely generous 1250. That's the maximum you can pay an undergraduate uh, here. And 1250 buys us eight concepts um, uh, an hour. 
Yeah, they are master acquirer, Jewel, Julian, and I, a few other people. We go over it, make some uh, uh, changes, and then we apply it in numerous applications, and it works. So whenever you decide to drop out of whatever you are doing, this is what uh, you go to 10 years from now. Every information technology worker will be doing this or something better because all of our applications require processing knowledge and you cannot do it without meaning. We have hidden from doing meaning for 60 years, 60 of my 72 years. I have always worked in semantics and I have been one of a very small group maybe a dozen uh, people of my age and uh, uh, caliber who uh, refused to be swayed by the syntacticians who thought that they could analyze the sentence syntactically so well that somehow it will tell us what it is about or that we use a better and better statistical algorithm in machine learning and produce information out of nothing. I guess I'm, uh, it's time for a shameful confession. I have never believed in perpetuum mobile. Do you know what perpetuum mobile is? It's the engine which uh, works without any supply of energy. You start it and it works forever. It's like me, but I will die early in June 2026. Thank you, guys. Do we, do we have any time for questions? Yeah, maybe a couple of minutes. And I am V. Raskin at Purdue.edu. Uh, those of you who are in the program know me at least virtually. I approve all, 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 all of your registrations and stuff like that. I never tell you what to do for your research. I should probably start. <laughs> Thank you, guys. <laughs>